I'd like to demonstrate a data processing technique to improve the quality of your NMR data. Here I have a fluorine 19 NMR spectrum of a compound uh, and I can see that the spectrum has a very sharp line, a very broad line, and some very low signal to noise ratio uh, lines in the NMR spectrum. If we expand this region of interest and blow up the spectrum vertically, we see that we can't really tell um, the multiplicity of these small lines, the signal to noise ratio is very low. We can improve the quality of the data by taking a look at the sharpest line of interest in the NMR spectrum, let's assume that it's this line, and we measure its width at half height. The width of half height, this, the width at half height of this line is approximately seven hertz. The most uh, intelligent way to set the line broadening parameter is to use about three quarters of the line width, the sharpest line of interest. So if I set the line broadening parameter, change it from zero to 5.25 hertz and re Fourier transform the spectrum, I see that we have an NMR spectrum now with a higher signal to noise ratio and if we blow up the spectrum vertically and we look at these lines, we can now see multiplicities in these lines that we couldn't see before, particularly in this region of the spectrum. So we've improved the quality of the NMR spectrum quite a bit. If you use too much exponential line broadening, let's say that you were interested in this large line in the NMR spectrum and you weren't interested in the smaller ones, we'd measure the width at half height for this line and it is about oh, 280 hertz wide. If we used, let's just say, um, 180 hertz of line broadening, so I set the line broadening parameter LB to 180. Fourier transform the spectrum. We get a spectrum again with higher signal to noise ratio, but now if we look at the the low intensity um, region, we see that these lines are now of high signal to noise ratio, but they're of very low resolution. So there's a price to pay for the increased signal to noise ratio, and that's resolution in the NMR spectrum. If we compare all three results now um, in our NMR spectrum, so the top trace shows with no exponential line broadening, the middle trace shows with 5.25 hertz of line broadening, and the lower trace shows the spectrum with 180 hertz of line broadening. First, if we look at the, the line um, which we assumed was the sharpest line of interest in our spectrum, you can see that the signal to noise ratio in the middle spectrum is certainly the best, and the line is excessively broad in the one where we used 180 hertz of line broadening. If we look at the low intensity region of the spectrum, and we blow that up. And in particular, let's look at these resonances in this region. We can see that with no exponential line broadening in this case, all we see really is noise in the NMR spectrum. And if we look at with, with um, the appropriate amount of line broadening, 5.2 hertz of line broadening, we see that in the red spectrum, um, we can see, we can pick out the multiplicities of these lines. There's a doublet of doublets here and a, a complex multiplet here that we can't really tell what it is. And then if we look at the lower trace, um, it's just broadened out to the point where we don't get any information at all. So I hope this helps you um, decide uh, on, on which line broadening parameters to use for your NMR spectrum to improve the quality of your data.